on deadly ground is the Steven Seagal mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world what you get when AI writes a script and the only prompt is farting into the mic. I anything once. It starts off with a fire at an oil rig where the firefighters have no fucking clue what they're doing. Luckily for them, Smoke and Steven shows up that fire's just out. and is gonna save all their asses. And the crane's all loaded with explosives for you. That sh can wait because first he needs to get real close to the thousands of degrees fire and breathe in some of that non-toxic goodness. After confirming that, yep, it's on fire, he does the insane and highly unorthodox move of pressing a button. There's something magical about watching the best button presser in the business do his thing. Very impressive, Forrest, as always. That's why he makes the big bucks. Thousand dollars? I'd fuck anything. Anyways, Michael Caine's only here because he lost a bet and refuses to read the script. So when he's not dyeing his hair between scenes, he's quizzing Seagal on if even he knows what that stupid shit was all about. I don't know, something about faulty preventers or something like that. That's when he realizes his career is f that night, Seagal goes out to celebrate and is recognized by one of his biggest fans. Listen to me, you yellow snow eating piece of shit. Get the f out of here! Thanks, he gets that a lot. But it's getting late, so he assaults this elderly pool player with a lasso, knees this 80 year old in the chest, breaking multiple ribs, and scores himself a hottie. But you must be careful. Right. Back to Michael Caine, who's still thrilled to be here. Get out! Sorry, I don't give a shit. And is being such a joy to work with. If you have any great ideas, just keep them to your fucking self, okay? Now where do I stand? He still likes him better than Seagal, and it's not even close. Fuck these animals stink. Hearing about Seagal going on another rampage against the elderly, these guys check on their friend. Hello? Anybody home? And tell him to get the fuck out of there. There's gonna be a goddamn disaster. I don't want any part of it. It's a Seagal movie. They all are, and nobody ever does. Now, at present count, you only have ten fingers. What the fuck do you mean, only? Go to hell. They came to help you, so how about you cut the attitude, you wrinkly old fuck? <laughs> if they're gonna have a chance to Andy Dufresne their way through this river of shit, they call a movie, they're gonna have to work together. There is no I in team. It is T-A-E-M. So they trash the kitchen and refrigerator <laughs> to make Seagal think he's already been there. And while his partner takes him somewhere safe with stairs and no elevator, he does him a solid by clearing his browser history like a true bro. Now Kane has the press breathing down his neck. The people here want to talk about skin cancer. Well, that's weird. We want to talk about women who fail to obviously and when they do, they give birth to abnormal babies. He's not a doctor, but shit, he thought you were gonna ask about the movie. This is all so much better. And this changes nothing. But while talking about birth defects and terminal illnesses lifted his spirits, they come crashing back down when Seagal shows up. And not even Seagal can believe he lowered himself to doing a Seagal movie. I gotta say, I'm a little ashamed of you. He's not so proud of himself either, but at least he's not you. How much is enough? How much money is enough? Thanks, Neil Breen, but he understood the first time. And if you're asking, the most he would pay to get out of this movie, that number doesn't exist. But there's no time for that because there's another emergency. There's been another accident. Where they need his button pushing skills and they need them now. You're the only one with the expertise. So he goes to check it out, but everything's looking pretty good and it looks like a false alarm when Bob reveals he's been taking night classes and thinks he can handle the whole button situation. <laughs>
And he did okay, I guess, but it just wasn't the same. Later, these guys just happen to be in the area when Grandpa's dementia flares up again. But then they find Seagal hibernating. And now Grandpa is gonna be insufferable. Just like all Alaskan tribes, this one's made up of mostly young hotties who desperately want a piece of that ass, but they're gonna have to wait their turn. Meanwhile, Michael Cade lets everyone know that all their sh** blowing up isn't anything to worry about. It's just rampant terrorism. The result of sabotage. With a touch of incompetence. Internal sabotage by people in your own company. Is this how you run Aegis Oil? Yeah, sure. Who fucking cares? He's just here for a paycheck. You can all eat shit. <laughs> Back to Seagal, who's enjoying his sleep eating before waking up confused. He thought you were a bear. He is, but not the kind you're thinking. Thank you. You tell him I'm a mouse hiding from the hawks in the house of a raven. She's gonna take a hard pass on that one. Now roll over and squeal like a pig. <laughs> As soon as he can walk again, he uses his strong bond with animals to help get him home. They did roughly 30 takes, and this was by far the best one, so just go with it. On the way back, they take a peyote break and tell Seagal if he has a vision of a bear and manages to conquer it, he'll gain some spirit powers or some shit. Then they laugh their asses off because they don't even have peyote. And they knew that bear was there the whole time. Now he has to make the most difficult decision of his life. The Sophie's choice between this old ghost lady or her. So he digs deep and makes the mind-blowing decision to choose him, Jason Voorhees style. But then he's killed in the next scene for no real reason. Which is what Seagal was gonna do. You guys are in a lot of danger. And the only reason he picked him, it was gonna be hilarious. So he says he was just kidding. He chooses her. But it's too fucking late. Now he's in a pissy mood and this shit hasn't been coherent anyways. So fuck it, now he has a snowmobile. To cheer himself up, he knows this old guy who he's been jonesing to attack viciously. But son of a bitch, he must have already done this because who else would have looted the fucking microwave? And why else would he keep a change of clothes there unless they have sleepovers like their 10 year olds? this movie stupid. Knowing about Seagal's bloodlust for the elderly and having fathers themselves, the heroes make their move. Then, after the most embarrassing gunfight in history, which is a record Seagal will break many more times, where nobody gets close to hitting anyone, this guy sprays and prays his pistol from the hip like it's a fucking machine gun. This guy just says fuck it and throws his, which Seagal rap blocks. Then poor naive Bob, who's never seen a Seagal movie before, calls a timeout to ask what the fuck. Delve down into the deepest bowels of your soul. Try to imagine the ultimate fucking nightmare, and that won't come close. To even the best Seagal movie. Now she gets serious and they call up Hartman, who's not doing a damn thing in this piece of shit until he gets his blackmail photos. Yeah, here. In a sick twist of irony, whatever those photos are can't possibly be worse than being in a Seagal movie. And don't mind him, he's got a small role coming up about a guy who loves fried food and killing and is just here to observe Seagal. Speaking of, Seagal's got a hankering for both. It's like I always say, we gotta blow it now. He has never once said that. Have you learned anything from my father? That his wife had an affair with a Chinese guy. Where the f are you going with this? There are enough dead bodies. 
Let's leave it to the authorities. Enough dead bodies. You did not just fucking say that. Meanwhile, Hartman's letting his guys know just who they're dealing with. Anytime the military has an operation that can't fail, they call this guy in to drink a gallon of gasoline so he could piss in your pool. You could drop this guy off wearing a pair of bikini underwear, and tomorrow afternoon he's going to show up without his toothbrush and a fistful of pesos so he could piss in your campfire. Any fucking questions? So let's go find him and kill him. And they have to do it fast because holy shit. He is really destroying the environment, and his degeneracy has reached the point where he's fucking shanking poor unsuspecting trees. Then he cranks it up a notch and targets this very real oil rig so he can destroy Alaska's environment and economy while also murdering low-level employees who are just trying to make an honest living. <laughs> while Seagal's getting that euphoric rush, he has her planning the explosives conspicuously while wearing the same color clothing as him so she can take the fall for it. Now we're back with Kane. This whole place is gonna blow. By that he means the movie. If you wanna go down with your ship, that's fine. But I am not that stupid. Oh yes you are. Fucking got him. Then he immediately goes from getting murdered by Kane to getting murdered by Seagal. <laughs> But Seagal does him dirty by killing him with a continuity error as he throws him into this perfect condition tail blade that we just saw him blow up seconds earlier. <laughs> then there's the lady with the impressive talent of being able to run in reverse the way Seagal runs normally. She's sick of how one dimensional the women are in Seagal movies and is gonna change that by crying hysterically and crashing her car for no reason other than her own incompetence. Which is embarrassing, but should be fine as long as that stupid spark plug doesn't start spitting again. Seagal has no idea who that lady was. Oh man, he was getting carried away, killing all these blue collar workers with families that he almost forgot to create a massive oil spill. That was a close one. Now Kane is in full give zero fucks mode without any help from you, Prince, and is just drunkenly yelling at the entire production crew. You're a bunch of godless pricks! Then he runs into Seagal, whose irony meter is non-existent. What does one say to a man with no conscience? Nothing. You stare at them like you don't want to fucking be there. Then he decides he's too old for this shit and he's out. I'm leaving. And Seagal realizes, holy shit, he is kind of old and murders the fuck out of him. <laughs> then she decides to talk for some reason. This is for my father. Good job, sweetie. But he didn't kill your father. Which you should know because you were fucking there. No, so Seagal tries to throw her into an explosion. But she's so damn slippery. Now the whole place is going to explode, which they couldn't possibly be ready for. We're going to die. Even though they set the explosives and nothing unexpected happened. So they make a break for it, and she's trying really hard to keep it together. But when he does this shit, she fucking loses it and can't run through all the laughter. So now she's dead, and you get a lecture. Our children, they influence the media so that they can control our minds. They have no care for the world they destroy. They basically control the legislation, and in fact, they control the law. Now I've been asked what we can do. Let's go to some remote state or country. 